Hello, my name is Karuna, and I'm so delighted to introduce you to Asia Donovan. I understand you work at an intersection of art and science with a specialization on creating avatars for global transformation. Can you explain what an avatar is and how you use them in your work, please? Yes, of course. Well, avatars are one of my favorite things to talk about. Maybe it's good to define what an avatar is for those yes, who please, don't know. Please, please. So an avatar has, you know, it's been seen these days in modern times, mostly on the internet, games or Facebook or on your cell phone where you create an image of yourself or a version of yourself that you express in the digital world. But before the digital world, there was an ancient idea of avatars, of divine spirits coming into being in order to serve and help all sentient beings be free of suffering and, you know. Like ascended masters. <laughs> exactly. I believe that the avatars that I'm creating have a, they have that divine energy just because of the way that they're created. I started creating these avatars by bringing toys and stuffed animals to five different continents and exploring how different cultures play and how they use storytelling for social change. And the way I did that is passing these toys around. People would choose the one that they resonate with the most. And then you pass it around the community and everyone contributes to the story or the purpose. And typically the story or the purpose is related to that community. So if it's a homeless community, it's the struggles they're dealing with. It's the types of homes they'd like to live in. It's sustainable housing, whatever it may be that's kind of related to that topic. And usually it's aligned with something the community is struggling with or something they want to communicate or something that can be ben of benefit to them and or the greater world. I've created over 55 different uh, avatars with different communities all over the world. Some of them are more spontaneous and some of them go through the kind of laborious research process of literally interviewing dozens of people in order to kind of have the story emerge. Smokey the Bear is for forest fires. We all know him in the US. Each of these avatars is similarly branded but for other topics. So it could be homelessness, it could be women's empowerment, it could be animal welfare. There are so many different characters, just like there are humans in the world, there could be that many avatars in this imaginary world I've created called Presentville. But they're just a tool to deliver stories. So three of my favorites- Wait are, a minute, Presentville? Yeah. Okay, Presentville has how many residents? Currently, we're up over 50 plus residents okay. in Presentville, which are all these different avatars that have come to life through this community storytelling technique. I love this already. Yeah. <laughs> I want to live in Pleasant. <laughs> Me too. And you do. When you are fully present, you are in this moment. And that's how you access Presentville. So it is an imaginary world, but it also bridges this world. You have a nonprofit, correct? Yeah. Global Peace Train isn't just a nonprofit organization in the real world where we deliver, you know, needed resources to people all over the world, but it's also a vehicle that brings these avatars to and from the imaginary world of Presentville. And it's a really, you know, it's a really special train because not only does it have the light side, it also has the dark side. We hand painted our toy train. It's made out of wood. And on one side, it has all the representations of what, you know, lightness in this world is. And then on the other side, it's all what darkness in this world is. And so it depends on which way the train is going and which door you board, where you might end up and what you might experience. Amazing. Do you have to have a qualification to get on this train or a Just budget or a desire know? to show up and help the world? You know, that's what the Global Peace Train is about. It's about bringing peace to the world, peace to ourselves and really finding a way to live in harmony with nature and with each other. This is a magical place. A place where we start to change the world. Where hearts open. Where we become who we were born to be. This is Presentville. 
Here, you'll find the tools you need to help achieve the dreams you've been dreaming. Here, the habits and patterns you've been locked into break free. In Presentville, all the magic of childhood becomes real again. Toys come to life and help us remember who we are and awaken our highest potential. On your travels, you'll meet friends who all have important gifts to give through their stories, just like you. Once you've traveled the path into Presentville, it's time for you to bring your own gifts to the world by boarding the Global Peace Train. You become a resident of Presentville, a character with a story to share, with gifts to give, and the ability to work on fixing real-world problems around the globe. You can join an existing Global Peace Train project or even make your own. No matter how you choose, you'll help us transform the world aboard the train. This is a magical place. A place where we begin to change the world. We're ready for you. Can you speak about three avatars you have been working with this year? The avatars that I've been working with the most in the real world this year are the Weeping Woman, the Eagle Avatar, and Rainbow Sparkle Pants. And the Weeping Woman's a great place to start. She, she's played by many different characters, many different humans actually embody her in costume. We've handmade a costume and they become her in full costume and then they wear the face paint. And it doesn't matter which woman plays her, you can really feel that character being coming through the art form of that person and then we film and, and make docu a documentary about it. It really is healing for the women who play the weeping woman because we are so often taught that those emotions are bad and should be hidden and so the weeping woman is a way to express those emotions in a healthy and uh, you know artistic way that can ben help benefit more than you know just your small circle. It can go out into the world and teach others. You spoke about how, how we could also work with um, our own avatars and how they would transform us into healing the pains that we're carrying towards each other and towards ourselves, mostly ourselves, and how we can dress ourselves and say the weeping woman and avatar and act that out so we can be responsible for ourselves. Can you speak a little bit about that? I love using the avatars for personal development because they give us an opportunity to play any character that we want and they also allow us an opportunity to be anonymous, you know, so we can hold a different truth. Mm. And uh, the Weeping Woman is a great mm. example. The original uh, Weeping Woman idea has been used through different cultures as well. So La Llorona Great. is from Mexico. And it's actually, she's actually more of a horror character from that culture. But in this context, we've transformed that saying, you know, maybe her message was a little misunderstood. Mm. As women, we all have connection to sadness and our own anger and these kind of emotions that are inherently human. And through that expression of sadness or frustration or anger, we can point out the things in the world that we're, we may be unhappy about. We can also look at ourselves and see where we have to grow. Mm -hmm. And so we invite people to become these avatars, like the weeping woman, and wear the costume and wear the face paint and contribute to the community story. Mm -hmm. It's a really fun way to express a different part of yourself and find a healthy way to express some of those emotions and some of those feelings that often are shamed in our society, you know? A lot, yeah. a lot. And then we become competitive and resentful and blame. So we spoke about meditation mm -hmm. and you use um, some sort of technique with your meditation. Um, can you share that? I have studied a lot of different forms of meditation and they've all been valuable mm -hmm. for different kind of layers, peeling back the layers mm -hmm. of who I am mm -hmm. and helping me really become more present. Mm -hmm. Of course, I bring in the avatars into mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and in this context, it's the giraffe. 
Okay. And she <laughs> around. Tall neck. Yeah. Yeah. Can see beyond and above mm. where oh, all cool. the other creatures can, right? Mm. Because the, the view is vast. Mm. And in reality, the giraffe is an endangered species. It's it's a creature that, you know, may not live forever. Meditation is such an important part of the human experience where we can be, you know, become more present, become more grounded, help mm. grow our own compassion for mm. ourselves, for mm. others, for the world. Mm. You know, and many traditions have this idea of like benefiting all beings. And, you know, that is, I think inherently the vision of Presentville is that all of these avatars are here to help teach us, help us grow. The avatars are great at connecting with children mm. and also adults. Some of them are more appropriate I think for the different adults need a lot more. <laughs> right? So how are the avatars used in the gamif gamification of personal development? Well, we touched on that briefly, right? With the with the weeping woman, for example. Okay, good. So um, many of the different avatars we also kind of track their long-term progress. I like this. So it's almost like in a real game. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. is a real game in a digital world where we can give points and assign points to different quests. Okay. And so as people grow in their own personal development, you earn, okay. you know, almost, almost like badges so yeah. you know the yeah. the girl yeah. scouts yeah. they get their badge yeah. when they do different things it's a similar idea with the avatars they just have their own brands and their own focus was there an avatar that you made of a native american avatar have you made anything have you drawn it from anything I did take a whole bunch of these toys to mm -hmm. Pine Ridge Good. probably 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And you get to see which, who is drawn to what and which mm -hmm. toys mm -hmm. really, which characters. So you can just lay them out and, and the people, characters will choose. And people pick, yeah. yeah. People pick what they're drawn to. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the characters that the Lakota already have a connection to were the most popular. The puppy, the eagle, the bear you know, these, the buffalo. So those are very meaningful mm. avatars or mm. characters for the Lakota mm. people. And, you know, they all have their own stories. And did you use this in your filmmaking, your most recent film? The Eagle Avatar is the character in Presentville that represents indigenous wisdom and preserving indigenous wisdom. And I've been very fortunate to be connected with Dave Swallow, a Lakota medicine man and Sundance chief and one of the headsmen of the Lakota, Nakota and Dakota tribes. And he lives on Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. I've known him since I was a kid. I was running around the sweat lodges while my mom was in sweat. And uh, so you were sweating, basically, <laughs> even if you were outside of the lodge, you were in taking in that medicine. So that's part of your That's part of your DNA. Exactly. And, you know, when you play on the playground, boy, you sweat. <laughs> you do. <laughs> so, um, you know, Dave and I have known each other a long time, and he had this dream to tell this story in film. He had seen a lot of films that kind of connected some of the indigenous culture or themes, but he felt like the native story was missing. And many of those stories are told through, you know, either the eyes of a white person or the eyes of even if they are indigenous, somebody who has been kind of colonized in the outside world. Dave Swallow grew up on Pine Ridge and has lived there his whole life pretty much, although he's traveled quite a bit. But he doesn't have the traditional colonization and education that people who leave the reservation encounter. And so his vision is really to tell the story from a true indigenous elder's point of view. And I think that's really important to see, you know, it may not, the film may not look like what we're used to of some big Hollywood movie, but this is a story that's coming from his eyes and from his, you know, wisdom Thank and you. trying to connect the youth, especially those who have strayed from the Red Road or who have strayed from the Lakota culture to help them reconnect and help outsiders who may not be Lakota, try to understand and connect with these teachings that are in danger of dying out as the elders leave us. How do you know what each community needs? Usually it's always defined by the community themselves. Mm -hmm. So so Pine Ridge. Yeah, Pine Ridge. So let's this talk is... about where you shot your film. 
Now, I have a deep connection with the Lakota people, just have since childhood. It wasn't until my mom kind of brought Dave and I back together, probably about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago to do another film, a documentary style film about Pine Ridge, a shorter oh, piece that he found out that I was doing film and he handed me a script back in 2017 and he was like, hey, let's make this movie together. And I was like, okay. He's like, I have a couple other smaller movies that I'd like to make before that that are shorter films and let's start there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, let's do yeah. it. When the sun goes down and you're in the darkness, things change. Billy, where are you? I'm at the hospital. What happened? I don't think you would believe me if I told you. It's a really beautiful story, and of course, Dave and I both bring you know, certain elements into the film. Mm -hmm. I always hide little avatar suggestions and things in all of my work. So yes, there are little, little crumbs that people will find if they're really interested in the different avatars. They may see some of those avatars throughout the film. We wrote it together based on his, an interview I did just like mm -hmm. this on mm -hmm. film, mm -hmm. and we created you know, a whole world with all these characters that connect to the Lakota culture and tradition. It was a, a very challenging film to make because, you know, obviously with an indie film, the funding is always one hurdle, right? But then beyond that, working on Pine Ridge is really challenging. Yes, Everything is very spread out. Mm -hmm. um, the amenities are not like what we're used to outside of the reservation, right? Not even close. No. So, you know, a lot of people up there don't have running water, they don't have heat, they don't have electricity, you know, they use homemade outhouses outside. To this day. To this day. This yeah, so it's like a third world country yeah. right here in the middle of the U.S. of A. We don't focus on that, but it's, it's a window into what Pine Ridge is now and also how Pine Ridge kind of got there. And how did they like you being up on the land and filming and were they happy to have you or yeah, wanted for sure. to be involved? <laughs> for sure. Many actors show up? For sure. Uh, you know, Dave, Dave Swallow is, has a wonderful community that he's built on Pine Ridge since he lives there. And him and his wife work tirelessly to preserve the Lakota teachings for future generations. And some of those teachings, just like with other indigenous cultures, are in danger of dying out as the elders leave us because the youth are coming in mm -hmm. and they have less interest maybe in the old ways and more interest in being in, you know, a more modern society, watching TV, having connection mm -hmm. to internet, mm -hmm. you know, all, all of the modern mm -hmm. things that youth do these days. Thank Dave talks about the Red Road and yeah. in indigenous, in his culture. Mm -hmm. The red road is the spiritual path. Mm. And so when we stray from that, as I did too, mm. as a teenager, mm. but to find it again, you know, and so yeah. the film is, is a call hoping that, mm. you know, those who are ready to walk mm. the spiritual path will come back to the red road and, mm. you know, follow, follow in the footsteps of their grandfathers. I mean, this is a big deal. I remember when I moved back to Colorado, I met a medicine man and that's how I went to a lodge and um, and it just changed my life. I mean, it, it gave me no out. And, um, and I remember helping to provide for an old grandmother up there, Grandma Gertie, and um, she said that her daughter had a trailer with 25 children in the trailer and the heat was coming from electric burners. Yeah. And that's the truth. Yeah. And, and it's still like that today for a lot of families. Yeah. We have to make a difference. We have to change the ways of this. We have to take care of our indigenous. There's one way to kind of ascend, you know, in our own spiritual journey. But there's also like the basic needs that have to be met for all of us. It's very challenging to, yes. you know, actually have an ascension if you don't have the very basic 
needs met, right? And at the same time, the, that struggle can birth whatever's coming. The most important thing is for me is to help people not only kind of have those basic needs met, but also work towards expressing their dreams and their highest purpose. So that's where this film comes in place. Of course, in the filmmaking process, we pay the locals, we, you know, we help pay some of the bills. We help bring resources yeah, and people to help build. Or, or... Where can we send money? <laughs> it's all on, not, where, yeah, it's it's all on, on that nonprofit? Yeah, okay. globalpeacetrain.org. Okay. We That's... must send money, everybody, <laughs> now. You have Animate Inc. as well. What is yeah. Animate? Well, that's where I do more of my like technology work. We should just <laughs> drop that in here. Yeah, totally. I do a lot of my my work in technology is in virtual reality, mixed reality, cinematic reality. So it's about telling stories through different types of technology. And a lot of them are headsets. Headsets that take you from this world into new worlds or some of the new AR headsets which allow you to be in this world and have a digital layer over top. And it's really a new way of storytelling and it has its own juice and its own power, right? When you are here in this moment and then you put on a virtual reality headset and next thing you know you're in a war zone, it is going to impact you in a way that just reading about it or, or seeing a video may not do. You're actually standing there and experiencing it. And the brain can't really tell the difference between what's real and what's not when you're in virtual reality. So it has kind of a deeper impact, you know, than than some of the other ways of telling stories. So. I had no idea about that scientific yeah. fact about the brain. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, when they get into like a virtual reality headset and they're standing on top of a building, they get the real body vertigo. They get, they feel like, they know logically they're inside of Do they? the headset. Do they? Yes, oh. but they it, it's like the body has the sweating, the real visceral reaction to what they're experiencing inside the headset. So it's a really wonderful way to start to build empathy for other cultures by literally visiting those places or, or stepping into new, pla new stories. Yeah. A lot of people are hesitant to open their voice and talk about a story or share a story that could impact the world. And I think that's where the avatars really come in because the avatars create an opportunity for people to be anonymous although they're in full costume, so that they can have, they can tell more truth, right? If you're, if you're not playing yourself, it's not as vulnerable. You can kind of, you can share more deeply knowing that maybe you're not gonna have the same impacts. Your family might not know it's you, or the world around you might not shame you for whatever you shared, right? So it's a way to tell a more honest story and remain anonymous, and it's a really cool way for the stories of the whole community to build on each other, to see different points of view of one topic. And find forgiveness. Absolutely, that's one way and you can- each other's stories. It will and inspiration, spark. right? And, inspir yeah. and empowerment. Yeah. It's gonna spark a lot of change. I hope so. <laughs> it's great timing. What is the first project you started at the youngest age you began developing these incredible projects? You could say it started when I was a child. Mm. So I was by myself as an only child and I would hang out in my closet with all my stuffed animals and all my toys, right? And then I grew into a teenager and like many of us, those toys went into the closet on the top shelf into a box, you know, hidden. And it wasn't until I had done a meditation retreat and something was just calling me. Mm. I was in my mid twenties and mm. I, went into my closet and I pulled down a toy and got in front of the camera and just spontaneously started to play. And something really interesting came through that experience for me. And it sparked this journey that took me across five continents, exploring how different cultures play and how they use storytelling for social change. Mm -hmm. And I did that by literally hauling huge bags of toys to all these continents by myself really? with camera gear and lots of extra baggage. <laughs> yes, some oh of the airlines God. were like, uh, <laughs> sorry, you can't get on with this. And then I'd always find a way. So, uh, <laughs> and who told you to do this? How did you invent that whole routine? In that moment, I pulled this doll from my closet in my mid 20s. Did she have a name? At the time, she didn't. Mm. 
She was completely, it was a toy that my mother gave me as a teenager. And I remember being like, oh my God, why is my mom giving me this toy? I'm, I'm a, a teenager. Like, I don't want to be playing with dolls anymore. And it ended up being like the thing that sparked a lot of my journey. When we're children, we're all connected through play, no matter where we live in the world. No matter what toys we play with, whether it's a rock or a stick or a stuffed animal or Legos or whatever it may be, we all are connected through play as children. So it's a common language mm. that we can mm. speak. Mm. And this one doll, as it came out and as I started to kind of reconnect with that part of myself that I had left in my childhood, it ignited just this mad journey I've been on for the last 20 years. Well, the Global Summit is so blessed to have you and your film. We wish you all the very best. Thank we really, you. I know it's going to affect so many people with your approach. I hope so. <laughs> and your creativity and your beauty and your grace. And it's just been such an honor to sit here with you and meditate through the various deliveries of this practice, knowing that we're all aiming for perfection but little do we know the gift of the essence of who we are until we explore and these avatars are just waiting for all of us to jump into yeah i have a feeling it's going to just transform my way of thinking and get me out of my 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 patterns and my yeah. structured life into a more joyful dance yeah and you know, it's like these avatars, they, they can help you channel what you're looking to channel. Oh, I and I that. love that part because it's like some of us are out of balance. We may be too stuck in our own suffering and our own darkness or too stuck in our own joy and blissed out and not connected to the real world, right? And so these avatars are a, are a bridge to help us kind of bridge both the lightness and the darkness within us and in the external world. And then hopefully come up with solutions that can be delivered through the global peace train, both as a nonprofit and as a storytelling delivery system to transform the world for the better. Thank you. We need a billion of you. Eight billion of you. So can you can you go out to every avatar and become, you know, our spokeswoman, please? It's well, been an honor sitting here with you. Oh, thank you. You're for absolutely me. so delightful and we can't wait to um, jump on your train. I can't wait.